Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Police tell us what began as an argument between a couple ends in flames and now an arson investigation. We have the latest details. Plus, gyms are preparing to open their doors. Our Alicia Beretta will be live with a preview of what you can expect. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City. It is bright and early, 8 a.m., 68 degrees. We are going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast. But until then, good morning. I'm Max Massey. I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us this morning. I stepped outside and it was so nice. So beautiful. We got to see little peaks of the sunshine this morning, the sunrise. And I mean, look, when we sat, when we saw the storms the other night, it's only going to get better than there. <laughs> right, Sarah? Well, yeah, we did need that rain, so that was good rainfall for us. But we have uh, actually started to see some clouds work their way in early this morning. Let's go ahead and take a look outside right now. You can see those clouds moving in from the north. Uh, it's 68 degrees outside and humidity is low, so that's good news. It's a comfortable morning for most of us. 60 in Comfort, 63 at Bernie Stage, 69 at Port SA, 68 at Stinson, and 66 in Floresville. Here's a look at the satellite uh, imagery, and we did have complete completely clear skies earlier, but those clouds are starting to move in from the north around an area of low pressure all the way out toward Texarkana. But the good news is we are going to be seeing more sunshine in the afternoon. Right now in Floresville, however, it is completely sunny, completely sunny out toward Del Rio uh, and in uh, Kinney County as well. So again, you can see those clouds moving in from the north, but it will be a mostly sunny day in a bit toasty too. At least we'll have low humidity. High temperatures should be in the low 90s in Northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, but we have got a heat high on the way and our high temperatures are going to be even warmer. I've got a look at those toasty temperatures coming up soon. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man and woman were covering in the hospital after police say an argument led to a car filled with flames. San Antonio police say they responded to a domestic disturbance right before midnight at the Motel El Tejas on Roosevelt Avenue. The couple reportedly in a heated argument. The woman eventually left the scene only to later return, argue again, and then police say that they she set the vehicle on fire. Investigators say the man tried to stop her, but it was too late. Firefighters broke through the property fence. They were able to get the fire contained. Damage had already been done. Both the man and woman taken to Bamsey with burns. We're still waiting to learn what charges, if any, that woman will face. Also new this morning, police are looking for the man who they say stole a car with a woman's child in the back seat. Now, officers say that woman left her two month old baby in the back seat of her running car while she went inside a convenience store on Evers and Glen Ridge around 1245 this morning. Now, one of two men standing outside jumped in that vehicle and took off with the baby inside. Now, about an hour later, police received a tip that the vehicle was behind Lindy's on Fredericksburg. Police believe the call was from the suspect himself. Now, the baby was found safe and was reunited with her mother. The incident remains under investigation. And we have an Amber Alert out of Atascosa County. A 14th month old boy is missing. Investigators believe 28 year old Catherine O'Connor may know something about the case. Investigators searching for her as well. She was last heard from in Poteet. Law enforcement believe the 14th month old Edgar Collins may be in danger. Now, the woman that we just showed you, she was last seen driving a blue Voyager van with Texas license plate number LSJ. 8380. So if you've seen them or know any information about this case, you're asked to call police immediately. And since Governor Greg Abbott's announcement earlier this month about reopening fitness centers, numerous gyms across the state have been prepping for the reopening, which is set for tomorrow, May 18th. But before you head back to the gym and pick up the weights, there are some procedures that you're going to need to know about. Lisa Barra, join us live from Gold's Gym on what you can expect starting tomorrow. Good morning. Yeah, well, you want to be prepared, so we want to get right to it and show you what you can expect at some of these Gold's locations, Gold Gym locations. With me live is the Senior VP of Operations, Justin Goddard. The first thing, you you don't need to use your hands once you walk into the locations. Correct. So here at Gold's Gym, we've implemented uh, additional safety precautions, such as a step and pull. We've, we've installed these at all of our locations. That way, it's completely touch-free, um, if you prefer. And then we'll walk right in. And one thing that you already know about Gold's Gym's location, you just scan in your membership. So we're going to make our way. If you see down here, they already have those markers for you. So remember, stay six feet apart. But you all also have been implementing these new cleaning procedures. So tell me about that. Correct. So um, 
we've, we've implemented um, several uh, additional sanitation, medical grade supplies, um, not only available for our members to use at several different stations, but also several housekeeping carts so that our team members have access to additional cleaning supplies, conducting different zone cleaning and different things like that throughout the day. And one of the things that I noticed was the hand sanitizers, right? More of those have been implemented. And then another safety measure is that every other cardio equipment is going to be closed, correct? That's correct. So um, when, you, when you see our cardio equipment, you'll see that every other piece of equipment is tagged out of operation. Again, just to ensure the, the uh, physical distancing. Um, and then there's also some equipment throughout the gym that we've either moved or spaced out and marked out, again, for additional safety measures. And then some of the amenities. So we're talking about the cardio cinema where those group classes take on. What can members expect now? Correct. So um, some of the amenities will not be available, uh, such as group exercise, personal training, uh, kids club, etc. But members will have access to cardio strength machines, all of our stretching areas and more. And if you stick around with us here on GMSA later on in the next half hour, we're going to be talking about those recommended items that you should bring to the gym, including here at the Gold's Gym. Um, you mentioned that close to 100,000 members in San Antonio for Gold's Gym. Correct. All right. So all these people are going to be affected. Stick around with us live from Gold's Gym. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. We do not have the latest confirmed coronavirus numbers in Bear County this morning because Metro Health officials had the weekend off. Now, officials tell us this was only the second weekend employees have had off in the 115 days since the outbreak began. Now, our local leaders did talk about area hospitals that they've seen a significant drop in patients on ventilators. There are now 14 patients currently on ventilators, 66 patients currently in hospitals with COVID-19. 29 in the ICU and 16 cases that are under investigation. Now, Judge Wolf announced that there were no new COVID-19 cases at the Bear County Jail. And applications for housing help continue to pile up here in San Antonio. Both the city and the county do have programs to help with housing during the pandemic, each using federal dollars. So the city approved and designated $25 million for this housing help program. This morning, 13 million more than half of that has been requested through a growing amount of applications. So far, more than 7,000 applications have been received with the city, expecting 10,000 this coming week. Now, the city's COVID-19 Emergency Housing Assistance Program helps people pay for rent, mortgages, and utilities, as well as offering cash for assistance for things like food and groceries and gas. Now, the application for the city program can be found online right now at sanantonio.gov. Several health care Excuse me, several health career high school staff members will self-isolate after an employee claims to have tested positive for COVID-19. That's according to Northside ISD. The district says the employee was at the health careers campus, and that was Friday, along with other staff members working to close out the school year. The employee says they were tested for COVID-19 later that day and claimed to receive positive results. It's unclear how many employees are self-isolating at this time. And we now we know nursing homes can be hotbeds for COVID-19. That's no different here in San Antonio. A big jump in cases at Legend Oaks West, just outside Loop 410 and Highway 90 on the west side. So here are the latest numbers. There are 29 cases in total at that facility. 16 are residents, 13 are other staff members there. The total number of cases more than tripling just days after the city released numbers on Tuesday. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says that while they continue to closely monitor the situation, there is a much wider effort happening at the same time. COVID-19 cases have been continuing to rise across the state. Texas saw more than 1,800 cases yesterday and one of the largest single-day jumps so far. That brings the total to just under 47,000. Most of the cases were reported in Amarillo. There were more than 700 cases confirmed yesterday. The governor deployed free mobile testing and says there is enough hospital beds and ventilators for everyone who needs them. Meanwhile, Mayor Ron Nuremberg continues to highlight the importance of wearing a mask and practicing social distancing, even as the city begins to slowly reopen. Now, his message comes after a steady rise in confirmed cases and deaths across the Lone Star State. Right now, at last check, 46,999 confirmed cases here in Texas, and we've reached 1,305 deaths across the state. And just a reminder, you can still get free testing at the Freeman Coliseum. 
You don't need to show symptoms, but you will need an appointment. And to get one, you can call 311 for information. And time now is 810, 68 degrees out. Making sure your child continues to be successful in school. Just ahead, some tips on homeschooling during the crisis. Plus, get this, a local coffee shop doing their part to help Aww. hungry kids. How Baby Yoda is playing a key role in all of it. How cute. Taking a look outside with a live cam. It's a beautiful day, beautiful morning. Definitely step out if you have a chance and enjoy it. We're going to check in with Sarah to see how temperatures will warm up during this week. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. A local coffee shop doing their part to help fight against chronic hunger when it comes to children. And they're doing it with a one of a kind Fiesta medal this year. So Merit Coffee creating a Baby Yoda themed medal for customers. The proceeds of the medal sales, well, they were donated to Snack Pack for Kids San Antonio, a group that helps children who right now are food insecure. And last week, the donations provided 4,000 snack packs for kids in Bear County. Very good and very cute medal as well. Very cute medal. I say this all the time. It really is inspiring, especially in times of need, where we see people step up and help out. I know, and, and help a lot of people at that. Absolutely. Have, have you gotten your Yoda medal yet? No, but I, I had just seen it. This is the first time that I've seen that. I've seen, I've seen other people, you know, post medals, but this one's super cute. I like that one. Baby Yoda is super cute. Yes. The weather today, though, it's going to be toasty outside. We are going to be seeing uh, some sunshine, but right now we did see some clouds just work in their way in early this morning. Uh, it, otherwise, we were able to see clear skies in some places this morning, but those clouds are here just temporarily. It's 68 degrees outside. Humidity is low. Dew points are in the 60s. Uh, that's good. We're going to stay, uh, stay with low humidity throughout the day today. North North West winds at about five miles per hour. Let's take a quick check at wake up temperatures around the Alamo City. It's 60 degrees in comfort, 69 New Braunfels, 67 JBSA Randolph, 64 in Hondo, 66 in Tarpley. Nice and comfortable out there this morning, even where it's a little bit warmer down in Pleasanton. It's 71 and 70 in Del Rio. We are seeing really nice weather again because of that low humidity. Here's a look at the satellite imagery. You can see those clouds moving in from the north here, uh, but they are broken up, so we are going to be able to see some sun through those clouds as well. Otherwise, it's completely sunny out toward Floresville, but you are going to see some clouds soon. Hondo, you're looking at clouds moving in from the north as well. Uh, and like I said, here in San Antonio, we will be able to see the sun in the afternoon. It's just now we're dealing with those clouds working their way in from the north, all because of this low pressure system currently over the Texarkana region. Uh, this is that same system that brought us the good rain on Friday night. It made its way through uh, San Antonio out to Houston and then moved up to the north a little bit. Uh, and again, we're going to be seeing these clouds moving in from the north because of this low pressure system, but we're also going to be seeing dry air moving in from the north as well. Take a look at the future cast. It does show that skies will gradually clear and into the afternoon. It should be nice and sunny. Uh, and again, with that drier air moving into place, even though it's going to be hot with high temperatures in the low 90s for many locations, that low humidity is going to help it feel nice outside anyway. We won't have to deal with with, uh, any kind of uh, heat index today. Take a look for temperatures out to the east, though, out toward LaGrange, Gonzalez. Uh, highs are likely going to be in the 80s today, and the reason for that is those clouds will stick around a little bit longer out east than here in San Antonio. We'll already be at 84 degrees around noon, and then in the afternoon, 91 for the high in the Alamo City. Northeast winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour will be pretty nice and keep things comfortable, especially in the evening as the sun is setting. It's going to be a great evening to sit outside on the porch, watch the sunset, uh, and uh, just enjoy some time outdoors today in spite of the hot weather. However, we are going to see the heat build on itself. Out to the west, there's a dome of high pressure, a heat high, we like to call it in meteorology terms. And what that's going to do is it's going to move into place, and every day through the middle of the week will be warmer than the last. Take a look at these high temperatures around the Alamo City. Tomorrow, 93 degrees for the high temperature. Then on Tuesday, in the mid-90s, potentially even in the upper 90s, if we see that trend continue. So we are in for a bit of a heat wave here through the the uh, middle of the week especially and even as far as rain chances go it's not looking great this week by the end of the week we should see some isolated storms on the radar but still it's going to be 
a fairly quiet week after some rain last week. So thankfully we got some good rain Friday night. Uh, we'll keep you informed about those rain chances by the end of the week. Stephanie, Max. Okay, I enjoyed the break. Thank you, Sarah. Now I will brace for the 90s. There you go. And not the decade. <laughs> <laughs> right, not the decade either. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Love the 90s. 818, 68 degrees out. And learning and teaching from home, very different for everybody, but will it impact your child later on? Coming up next, some tips for parents to help support young children's learning. And let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three is six, one, zero, fireball, zero. Daily four, eight, nine, three, zero, fireball, zero. Cash five, three, seven, 24, 26, 31. Lotto Texas, two, 17, 31, 33, 34, 37. And your Powerball numbers, 8, 12, 26, 39, 42, Powerball 11, Power Play 2. Good luck. Good morning and welcome back. With schools closed across the country, your kids might be learning math, science, and English right from your living room. And so we have some effective ways that parents can help their children succeed academically while they're at home during the pandemic. That we're going to pretend that we're doing the what does the going right from now? here to here do to your child's learning scientists with the university of california irvine used data from the ohio education system looking at standardized test scores of students kindergarten through 12th grade researchers found the students enrolled in online schools did significantly worse than kids who went to a physical classroom for school the study suggests that some students can fall behind during the COVID-19 pandemic where students are expected to do their learning online. So what can parents do? Implement strategies to pace your child's learning, communicate with teachers and other parents for ideas on how to support your child's learning, and encourage your child to connect with other students virtually for study groups. 14% of families with school-aged children lack high-speed internet, so if internet access is a problem, parents can access teachers through phone calls, request hard copies of materials to supplement video sessions, and even ask internet providers about low-cost or no-cost internet access. And this study was done before the pandemic and also found that African-American and Latino students were less likely to enroll for e-learning classes compared to their white peers. Now, students with special needs were also less likely to enroll. So you guys are distance learning as well. Yes. Daughter Rooney, where is the go-to spot in the house? The, oh, gosh. I, you know, the, and I've heard this a lot, the kitchen table. Mm. You know, we have, you know, a desk here and there, but I guess she wants to be around where all the action is, and that's kind of in the middle of the house. And, Makes that's where sense. she does her distance learning. Everyone loves the kitchen. The Zoom meetings and yeah. Well, and then she can ask for a snack too when she's on her dangerous. Zoom meetings. Like, Mom, I want chips <laughs> or I want an orange. And it's like, okay. <laughs> Time now, 824, 68 degrees out. And two NFL players are in police custody after they turn themselves in. In the next half hour, the serious charges they now face. And homeowner being questioned after his home goes up in flames why police believe he may have been responsible with how it all began. And let's take a look at some birthdays. This weekend we have Hannah Ross, 101 years young. Happy birthday. Have a Happy great weekend. Happy birthday. And next one. This one is a very special Aww, one. Happy birthday, Gabby. Gabby, happy birthday. It is her 28th birthday this weekend. Remember to keep posting your birthday pictures. KSAT.com slash birthdays. We're going to include a name and engage. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us. Yes, it's happy Sunday because it's really nice outside right now. Beautiful out there. Enjoy Sunday it. fun day, yes. May 17th. Sarah, give us some good news. What is the rest of the day going to look like? <laughs> what would good news be for you, Max? Uh, good news would be 85 sunny and no humidity. Well, at one point it'll be 85 in the day. But okay. the, high temperature, the high temperature is going to be more likely in the low 90s for us today. But low humidity is out there right now, and that's good news. We're not going to see any kind of heat index value today. I I'm taking a look at satellite here because I want to show you that if you've been up early like us, you know that we started off the day completely sunny, but we're seeing clouds move in from the north here. Uh, but these clouds do have holes in them. In 
and they're also high up there. The ceiling of these clouds or where they start is at 25,000 feet. So again, they're pretty high up there. So we're really just looking at a, a really nice and sunny day later on today, but these clouds are moving in from the north and they will be temporary. You can see there's already some clearing behind Fredericksburg uh, with mostly sunny skies behind Fredericksburg to the north. Uh, 72 right now in Pleasant and 71 in Catula, 72 in Beeville. It's 68 degrees in San Antonio, 70 in Del Rio and 63 in Rock Springs. So a pretty pleasant start for us. Uh, and then looking ahead to the day, we will warm up. We're going to have low humidity, lots of sunshine in the afternoon and a high near 91. So it's going to be a hot day. Northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. If you do have access to the pool, today would be a great pool day or turn on the sprinkler. Let the kids run through the sprinkler today. All of it's going to be nice with that low humidity, just a little hot. And you will definitely want to make sure to uh, get out the sunscreen because of that sunshine. However, I do want to talk for a moment about the first named storm of uh, the Atlantic hurricane season actually happening before the season starts in June. Uh, there's Tropical Storm Arthur. We're going to talk a little bit about Arthur and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the path of Arthur and where you can find hurricane information throughout hurricane season. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Investigators are questioning a homeowner about starting a fire in his own home. Now, firefighters tell us that they responded to a call around 1120 last night in the 2200 block of Waverly Avenue. That's near Culebra and General McMullen. When they got there, they say they couldn't find a fire, so they left. But 30 minutes later, they responded to a second call at that house and put out a fire in one of the bedrooms. Investigators are now questioning that homeowner again to see if he tried starting it intentionally. Also new this morning, a man arrested after police say he burglarized a convenience store back in April. So according to the arrest records, 35 year old Francisco Guerra broke into the MS Express on Pleasanton Road. Police say that he stole a bag's worth of cigarettes and cigarillos as well as stashed some cash in his pockets. He was later identified on surveillance footage. He was arrested after officials looked up his information that they already had in his system. And as we continue to reopen the economy here in Texas, gyms in our region and across Texas, they've been prepping to once again open their doors after two months of being closed down by the state. Now, one of the biggest facilities popular among thousands of San Antonians, Gold's Gym. And our Alicia Pereira is live from their Bulverde location with more on what you can expect to see during your next visit to the gym. Alicia. Good morning. Yeah, well, nearly 100,000 San Antonians are members of Gold's Gym, so that's why we thought it was important to show you what you can expect. With me live, Justin Goddery, Senior VP of Operations for Gold's Gym. There are two big components that are changing. What are those? Yes, yeah, so um, per Texas state guidelines, um, first is capacity. So we'll be operating at a 25% maximum capacity, and we'll be monitoring that uh, very closely with our team members. The second piece, is the, the locker rooms. So in the locker rooms, the restrooms will be accessible, but both showers and storage changing areas will not be accessible. So once you walk in, this is kind of what you'll see. Signage all around to remind you what you should and should not be doing. Stay six feet apart. And then right here you see um, these chains that are blocking the lockers, but also they've implemented even putting zip ties. So they're making sure that people are following the guidelines, correct? Correct. And over here, another amenity that will be closed, you mentioned, are the showers. So we want to give you a look of, of what that is. And you mentioned that Gold's Gym has been very involved in alliances to make sure that these safety standards are, you know, being followed. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, both myself, our CEO, our executive team, we've been involved with several different partners across the industry collaborating on how to implement these, uh, you know, not only the state guidelines, but also take extra safety precautions. And there's some things that we want to show you on your screen of what you can bring. The recommended items during this COVID-19 pandemic. Gloves are recommended. They're not mandated. Another recommended item are masks, water bottle. And that's because you know, the, the water fountains, those aren't accessible. They're not being operated cor Correct. right now. Correct, exactly. So we're encouraging our members to either bring your own water or you can purchase uh, a water from our pro shop. Justin, thank you so much. And again, you saw that the locker rooms are going to be closed. So perhaps bring a duffel bag, something where you can keep your items safe. Another big thing to note, you cannot use cash anymore. So be sure to bring your debit or credit card. Reporting live from Gold's Gym, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Back to you. Thank you, Alicia. 
In national news, restaurants can now reopen in New Orleans but must take reservations and limit the number of people, while auto and horse racing tracks in New York can reopen without spectators. ABC's Karina Mitchell shares why health officials are being more cautious about restrictions on places you can eat as the economy starts back up. As confirmed coronavirus cases continue to climb across the U.S., 48 states will be completely or partially reopened by Monday. And in at least 21 states plus Washington, D.C., new concerns about a condition affecting some children. Known as multisystem inflammatory syndrome in children, the new sickness is defined by both a positive test for coronavirus or antibodies, in addition to symptoms such as fever, lab showing inflammation and multiple organ involvement, according to the CDC. Alani e. Rodriguez developed the illness more than a month after her mother recovered from COVID-19. The first symptom was fever. Um, then the second symptom was, of course, her energy. Then it became weakness and pain in her legs, vomiting, diarrhea. Um, and once we got to the hospital that same day, she started to develop shortness of breath. She couldn't breathe. Doctors say the majority of children that do get sick are responding to current treatments. Right now, it seems as though they're responding very well to the usual treatments that we use for Kawasaki disease, which is a high dose of intravenous immunoglobulin with or without the addition of either steroids. Doctors are also now revisiting health records from late winter and early spring, investigating whether cases were misdiagnosed as Kawasaki's disease, which has similar symptoms. Meanwhile, the economic toll of this pandemic continues to push business to the brink. Half of small business owners say they'll be out of cash within a month, according to the Census Bureau. The restaurants, they're being asked now to operate at maybe 25 a 30 percent occupancy level. Most of these restaurants had a had a hard time making a profit operating at a 100 percent occupancy. A new report from restaurateurs across the country says if this pandemic lasts for six months, they put their chances of survival at just 15 percent. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Also in your morning headlines, at least three firefighters in Los Angeles are in critical condition and another 11 are injured after a large explosion. Now the LA's fire chief says the fire started yesterday afternoon at a hash oil manufacturing plant when firefighters went in to help put out the flames. There was an explosion. 230 firefighters responded to that scene. Hash oil is made from extracting the chemical THC from cannabis plants to create a highly potent concentrate and is mainly used in vape pens. Now last check. Those four firefighters are still in the intensive care unit. And the two pro football players wanted as suspects in an armed robbery, they're now in custody. So Seattle Seahawks cornerback Quentin Dunbar and New York Giants cornerback DeAndre Lamar Baker, they both turned themselves into authorities. Now the two are accused of robbing guests at a party in Miramar, Florida Wednesday night. The victims say that the two held them at gunpoint, stealing thousands of dollars worth of cash and watches. The jail's website says Baker faces four counts of aggravated assault with a firearm. He's also charged with four counts of armed robbery. Dunbar's attorney claims that there are 15 different stories of what happened. Ten of those stories exonerate his client. Senator Mitt Romney posted a tweet yesterday in response to President Donald Trump firing inspectors general Stephen Lenick. Romney said, quote, the firings of multiple inspectors general is unprecedented, doing so without Good cause chills the independence is essential to their purpose. It is a threat to accountable democracy and a fissure in the Constitution balance of power. End quote. And Hollywood losing another gem in the business this weekend. Actor and comedian Fred Willard dying Friday night. His daughter releasing a statement saying that Willard passed away peacefully at the quote unquote fantastic age of 86. The four time Emmy nominee was known for his roles in the movies Anchorman fan favorite, best in show and a mighty win. He was also on several television shows like Modern Family and Everybody Loves Raymond. Actors, filmmakers and comedians touched by Willard's many talents have shared tributes on social media honoring the late actor. And time now, 839, 68 degrees out. Still ahead, a group of students in Bernie were not going to let the pandemic or schools being closed get in the way of their senior prank. We're gonna show you how they got creative.
fantastic. And also, this is a fantastic story. Just ahead, we have one of our great graduate segments. This one, Isabella Garcia from Southside ISD, an amazing story. We're gonna tell you right after the break. Well, there's a hint. I saw the UT Tower. <laughs> And taking a look outside with live cam, looking beautiful outside. Enjoy the 68 degrees, although it's not going to be too bad today. We're going to check in with Sarah after the break. Good morning and welcome back. In the midst of this pandemic, students across the country, they're distance learning and a lot of high school seniors, they're participating in virtual graduation. Still here at KSET, we are highlighting students in and around San Antonio. That's right. In today's great graduate segment, we introduce you to Isabella Garcia of Southside ISD. Because of her hard work, her perseverance and her tenacity, Isabella earned a $40,000 scholarship. Out of 275,000 students who applied, she was one of only 275 who won the award. We didn't even know she applied. <laughs> we did not. Honestly, I forgot about it. This fall, Isabella plans to be a UT student. Whether she is on the University of Texas Austin campus is completely dependent on the pandemic, but she knows she will be a Longhorn. Another step towards her ultimate goal. To become a physical therapist for special needs pediatrics, just like my sister. So I want to continue her legacy in a way because she was so strong. Getting to this moment in front of Southside High School has not been an easy journey for the Garcia family. Just a few years ago, Isabella and her family lost Ariana. So it was devastating whenever she passed away. Diagnosed with a rare neurological brain disorder, blessed to have her around for nine and a half years. Through the time we spent with the Garcia family, we could tell they're a very tight-knit group. Family first, everything else secondary. And Isabella uses her family and her sister as a form of motivation, especially when it comes to her academic goals. She's really inspired me to stay strong and to make my whole life out of caring for children like her. Teachers and faculty members here at Southside ISD call Isabella nothing short of an inspiration, not only to her classmates, but to also members of the community. And to that, she has some words of wisdom. Everything happens for a reason, and as long as they put themselves out there, and as long as they stay strong in their own faith, then I think that they can do whatever they want. Amazing story. Good advice. Yeah, she's so strong, and so is her family, and they're so nice, and I wish her the best of luck next year as she's becoming a Longhorn. Yes, and inspired by her sister, so we can't wait to see her do well in her uh, medical field. Yes. Absolutely. Did you coordinate with Steph? You're both wearing, wearing orange. We well, different are. Color, different shades different of orange. Different shades of orange. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's going to be nice and sunny today, guys, after some morning clouds here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the time lapse from this morning because we had more sun as the sun rose. And then, as you can see, that uh, deck of clouds moved into place from the north. Uh, but there are some holes in that cloud cover already, and we're going to have a very nice day today with an abundance of sunshine, particularly in the afternoon. Let's take a look at temperatures this morning. It is comfortable. It's 61 degrees in Kerrville, 64 in Rock Springs, 68 in San Antonio, a little bit warmer south of San Antonio or at 73 in Pleasant and 72 Carrizo Springs and in Del Rio it is 70 degrees. Hey, look at the surf temp out at Bob Hall Pier in Corpus Christi, 81 degrees. Now, in order to uh, allow for tropical storms to develop, the surface temperature, the surf temperature has to be greater than about 80 degrees. That's the surface temperature of water in order to produce tropical storms. That's why hurricane season, Atlantic hurricane season, is from June 1st all the way to the end of the November. Now, we're not seeing anything in the Gulf of Mexico, but there is a storm that has developed uh, before the start of hurricane season, the official start of hurricane season. That is Tropical Storm Arthur, which became a named storm last night. It's got wind sustained at 40 miles per hour with gusts up to 50 miles per hour. And by the way, this is the sixth year in a row that a storm has developed outside of hurricane season a little bit earlier than hurricane season starts on June 1st. So that's pretty interesting. Now, this storm is expected to impact parts of the East Coast. Uh, right along uh, the outer banks of North Carolina, there is a tropical storm warning. It's expected to make it close to there by Monday in the afternoon. Uh, so uh, it is going to affect some people in the United States, but then it's going to head back out into the open ocean. By the way, this is a look at the tropical cyclone names for the Atlantic hurricane season this year. Take a look at that. There's some interesting names on there, including Nana as one of them. Uh, and next storm would be Bertha if it does develop. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If you want to keep 
uh, uh, track with the hurricanes with us for the season, make sure to download the Hurricane Tracker app. It sends notifications to your phone. And of course, if there is any kind of development in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, you'll be the first to know by watching KSAT. So let's take a look at the satellite. I showed you that those clouds are moving in from the north. Uh, it is all because of this low pressure system over Texarkana right now, sending in those clouds from the north. But we are going to see clearing skies behind it, too, with dry air moving in place and staying in place throughout the day. So it's going to be a warm day with mostly sunny skies in the afternoon and high temperature right around in the low 90s for the vast majority of us. A little bit warmer out west toward Del Rio, but we'll be looking at a high right around 91 degrees in the afternoon. We'll already be in the 80s uh, around the lunch hour. Northeast winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour and then a heat high is going to settle in place and this is going to allow for high temperatures to soar even more. We'll be in the mid to upper 90s by Tuesday and even as far as rain chances go, Good thing we got some good rain Friday night because look at that, not really significant chance for rainfall over the next seven days, except for isolated storms are possible Thursday and Friday. Toasty this week, guys. Max, Stephanie. All right, we'll be prepared. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 849, 68 degrees out. And not letting the pandemic get in the way of a tradition. Up next, the prank <laughs> done by this group of seniors. And before you go, two people injured after a car fire. Police say they had responded to a domestic disturbance a second time after a woman set her vehicle on fire, burning her and her boyfriend. Now, firefighters were able to get to the fire to contain it, but the damage was already done. Both were taken to Bansy with burns to their bodies. Charges are pending. And police looking for the man who they say stole a car with a child in the back seat. Now, officers say the woman left her two month old baby in the back seat of her running car while she went into a convenience store on Evers and Glen Ridge around 1245 this morning. One of the men standing outside jumped into the vehicle, took off with the baby inside. About an hour later, police received a tip that the vehicle was behind Lindy's on Fredericksburg. SAPD believes the call was from the suspect himself. Uh, the baby was found safely, reunited with the mother. The incident remains still under investigation. Today, the Trump administration divided over safely reopening the country, and one of the president's top advisors takes on the tough questions, plus the roundtable on the push to exonerate Flynn and the Biden campaign's new strategy today on ABC's This Week with George. And a Bernie High School senior staying focused on what matters most to her despite uncertain, uncertain circumstances during the pandemic. Now, tomorrow on GMSA at 6, we introduce you to a softball superstar. Well, we're slowly warming up here in San Antonio. It's 71 degrees at the airport. That's up from our morning low, 66. It's 68 since and 70 in Hondo, 63 in Comfort and 61 in Kerrville, 70 out toward Del Rio, 72 down in Victoria, 74 in Beeville. Take a look at the day today. It's going to be hot, but hey, the good news is low humidity with mostly sunny skies in the afternoon. Northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then in the week ahead, the heat is on 95 degrees on Tuesday, but potentially even warmer if this heat high ends up being stronger than what we think. And then in the end of the week, we do have a small chance for some isolated rain, but still, guys, it's going to be a hot one either way. The heat is on. Heat is on. All right, thank you, Sarah. Before we come to an end this morning, we want you to check out a story that had a lot of us here laughing. Students at Warren High School were not going to let the pandemic get in the way of a traditional senior prank. So they decided to put the school up for sale on Craigslist. Mm, the posting went up earlier this week, and the price for the building was $2,020. 2020, there right, you go. Right. The senior special <laughs> included administration as well, and the listing also mentioned it had been vacant since March. Right. <laughs> Well, there's some truth to that. <laughs> it's not completely false, I guess. It's got a hot take out there. I feel like a building like that would get more than $2,000. Also, do you think there were any buyers? I think it was a play on 2020, yes. Max. Thanks, thank <laughs> no, thank you. No buyers. Well, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Have a great Sunday.